Hi, everyone. Welcome to our fourth installment of the 15 minute quarter. It's a monumentous occasion for us here at Granite Harbor Advisors because this is the one year anniversary of the 15 minute quarter. Uh, as anyone who knows me uh, probably can understand, it's really easy for me to get distracted by shiny objects and squirrels and things like that. So a special thank you to Leslie Laredo, who has really facilitated these to make sure that they are you know, high quality, on time and on target. So thank you to her. Uh, as I mentioned, this is the one year anniversary of the 15 minute quarter. So we're gonna do a little bit of a year in review in addition to our quarter in review. Our theme for this uh, quarter slash year is new year, same headlines. A little bit of a play on the uh, new year, new me aspect because a lot of what we talked about in 2021 we're going to spend some time talking about in 2022. And so the purpose of this 15 minute quarter, like I said, just walking back through what happened, not only in the, in the news last year, but to what happened in the market, be able to provide you, our clients, their friends and family with some benchmarks, some mile markers, some, some guidelines as to what to expect from your portfolio in 2021, and be able to kind of compare and contrast and say, Hey, did I do what I was supposed to do last quarter and last year? Now, as always, we got to start off with some of the legal stuff. Make sure we keep the, lawyer, the lawyers happy. First and foremost among those is, hey, this is really for informational purposes only. Um, I might make a few jokes along the way. They'll probably be terrible. But if I do uh, and you do something investment related because of it, please don't come back and sue us. Again, just general education. None of this is to be construed as, say, direct investment advice or anything of that nature. The other thing I'll, I'll mention is we are talking about some kind of current events, market headlines, news headlines. Uh, they're only as good as the uh, time period for which they are applicable. So if you happen to cross our website or you happen to cross this video two, three, four months down the road or two, three, four years down the road, please know that, hey, this was done in January of 2022, and maybe just make sure that the things we're talking about are still applicable because they are subject to change. But let's go ahead and dive in and talk about where we were in 2021, because 2021 was a year that looked eerily similar to 2020, both in the market and in the news. Uh, we kicked off the year with a brand new president. Joe Biden became our 46th president of the United States. And along with him, he brought a series of legislative proposals and action items that he wanted to try and accomplish in his first couple of years in office. Uh, we saw an infrastructure bill, and really we saw that Build Back Better Act that came in on the tail end of 2021 that was rife with tax law updates. We spent a lot of time in 2021 talking about what those tax changes could be and what impact they might have on the market. We also had interest rates begin to rise, the 10-year treasury hitting 2% for the first time since the start, or the 30-year treasury hitting 2% uh, for the first time since the start of the pandemic. And we've kind of seen this slow march in the bond market of rising interest rates over the, over the whole of 2021. Uh, some other things that became very hot topics, especially towards the end of the year, is inflation. We did an entire 15-minute quarter back in Q2 that specifically addressed inflation, and that has become a bigger and bigger headline as the year has gone on and into 2022. And so it's not going away. It's a thing that we've talked about six months ago. Uh, it's a thing that we were talking about actually 12 months ago, and it's a thing that we're still talking about today. Uh, because it's a significant concern for people. And then last but not least, cryptocurrency, uh, after kind of going into hibernation in 2019 and 2020, is back. Uh, it hit 50, 000, Bitcoin hit $50,000 for the first time, hit $66,000 again for the first time. And so you saw a lot of positive market movement in the cryptocurrency space in 2021. Well, what does that all mean? And where are we at in 2022? Well, New Year, same headlines. We're talking about a lot of the same stuff already in the first two weeks of 2022. Inflation, another key key inflation measure hits another record high. We've also had this uh, return of the Build Back Better Act. 
after Joe Manchin kind of torpedoed it at the end of December and gave Republicans this early Christmas present of, hey, I just can't get on the same page. Uh, we came out in the very first couple of days of the year and the administration said, hey, this isn't gone. This isn't done. We're still working on this. Interest rates continue to creep up in the bond market. The Fed is, is kind of discussing raising interest rates sooner and faster than originally in, expected in response to those inflationary numbers that we're starting to see and have seen through the kind of back half of 2021 and entering into 2022. And then last but not least, Bitcoin, which hit those you know, record highs of 50K and 66K has kind of come back down to earth, right? How quickly things change, kind of a what have you done for me recently? Already the headlines are, oh, Bitcoin's off to the worst start since the dawn of crypto. Uh, and the reason why we point that out is not to, to make judgment on you know, whether tax change legislation is good or bad, or whether cryptocurrency is a valid asset to hold or anything like that. The reason why we point these things out is to just help people understand that the media, not in the business of providing financial advice, they're in the business of selling advertising. And what sells are headlines that get people's attention. We always like to hit on that because a lot of people can look to the news to get market information. But we just want to kind of keep in mind, hey, the news media, they're there to inform you and they're there to, and they're there to sell advertising. They're not there necessarily to give you sound financial advice. Another key takeaway is we didn't get any tax legislation change in the end of 2021, which means a lot of the Roth conversion strategies, which were a hot topic and a big loophole that the Biden administration and Democrats wanted to close, that's still open. And a lot of the things that we spent last year talking about, hey, these are, some, these are some ways that you can get some tax advantage money into the market, those are still available. You can actually go to our website, graniteharbor.com, and you can take a peek at some of those archived videos and articles that we wrote about Roth conversion strategies. You can still execute on those in 2022 for the time being. Remember, Build Back Better Act, back on the table, we just got to figure out whether or not Democrats and Joe Biden are going to be able to get something that'll actually make it through both the House and the Senate. So a couple of other things, cryptocurrency, it's still a speculative investment. Uh, we did another webinar about this back in November, where we addressed, hey, kind of the pros and cons of cryptocurrency and, you know, what things people should look for or consider if they're making an investment in cryptocurrency. And we're not saying it's good or bad. We're, we're, we're not passing judgment on it. What we do want people to understand is that it is a speculative investment. What goes up can also come down and what goes down can also come up. And investors should just understand that risk return relationship that exists, especially in that market, because it is a very volatile market. And so last but not least, we can't predict what's going to happen in the future right? We can't use the news. We can't use headlines to try and say, hey, the market's going to go here or the market's going to go there. In absence of knowing where the market's going to go, our firm strongly believes that portfolio allocation should be based on client need, not what we think is going to happen in the future, right? We're just not good at predicting where something's going to go. That always comes along to kind of throw us off base. Our goal is, hey, let's construct portfolios that can mitigate those unknown factors uh, that might pop up at some point in time. Well, let's jump over to performance and talk about, hey, what happened in 2021? Because on the equity side, it really was a banner year. Unless you were living in an emerging market economy, like, you know, kind of Peru or South America or certain parts of Asia, you had a great year. Uh, in the United States, we're up 25.66% on the broad base market, on the broad base market, developed international 12.62% to have a negative year in emerging markets. And then global real estate made a huge rebound after a big pullback in 2020, as we kind of get more reopening and people going kind of back to work. That's also, an, it can be an interest rate sensitive asset class, but on the whole, equities did great. 
Bonds, on the other hand, now that we're in this rising interest rate environment, you know, we're a little negative in 2021. And we'll talk about in a broadly diversified portfolio, kind of some strategies that we can do to protect against that. Chief among them knowing negative performance in the bond market doesn't necessarily translate to all bonds. But from a purely diversified standpoint, let's kind of talk about in Q4, if you had a broadly diversified portfolio, things were good. Whether you had a bunch of bonds or not, you were probably still incrementally positive for Q4 2021. Uh, if you had a 100% equity portfolio, you did almost 6.77%. We've got a few other benchmarks on the page. 80-20, uh, kind of call that like a growth portfolio. Would have done about 5.42%. And for the year, 100% equity portfolio up just over 19%, a growth portfolio up just over 15%, a moderate growth portfolio. Um, this is a portfolio that a lot of people carry into and through retirement over 11% in 2021. If you were paying attention to the headlines and all the terrible news that was coming out throughout 2021, you might be a little surprised to see these numbers. And that's a big reason why we try to separate what's happening in the news and what's happening in the market. We're firm believers that you should, with, that you should stay disciplined, maintain a well-diversified portfolio so that you can capture this performance when it's available. Um, walking through a few others, if you were in that 40, 60 kind of income portfolio, 7.38% for the year, all the way down to 100% bonds, 0.04, a quick note about these numbers, because you'll say, hey, wait a minute, Nick, you just told me that the bond market was negative one and a half percent. The way we create these benchmarks is 100% bonds for us means 90 day T-bill. It's the risk-free rate. Those were slightly positive in uh, 2021. Not all bonds are created equal. Um, and so other longer duration bonds that maybe have some credit risk or interest rate risk did were a negative. Uh, and just like in the 100% equity, you see 19.04%. Well, if you own, say, more US stocks or more small stocks or more value stocks, your 100% number would actually be a little bit higher. The reason why we show it this way is to just say, hey, if you own every equity and it's market cap weighted amount, which is just a fancy term for in its proportionate amount, this is what you would have done. Most investors are gonna tweak those numbers for their particular set of circumstances. So just know these benchmarks, these are guidelines, these are guardrails. These are, hey, if I made no decisions whatsoever other than how much stock should I own and the rest is gonna be in a risk-free, uh, the, at the risk-free rate, this is about what I should have done. When you're looking at that December, 2021 statement and comparing it to your January 2021 statement, the rate of change, the difference you see is going to be somewhere in between these two numbers based on your portfolio. The reason why we like to get this out there, though, is to make sure everybody's got some context around what they did and how they got there. If your number is above these, awesome. Pat yourself on the back. You had a great year. If your number's below these, then, hey, let's maybe reach out and find out why. Right. Especially with our clients, we always encourage everyone, if you have a question, if you have some comments, if you'd like to know more about what we do and how we do it, please reach out to our office. You can reach us in a variety of ways. Uh, you can call us at 832-461-0789. You can email us at info at graniteharbor.com, or you can go to our website where there's a ton of great content, www.graniteharbor.com. Uh, you'll be able to get in contact with me or my other two partners, Brian Sack and Tim Smith, any one of us would be more than happy to answer you know, questions about portfolio management or any other financial uh, questions you might have. So thanks for taking the time to watch. We appreciate it and hope everyone has a great rest of their day.